Welcome to the ACS Bulletin Brief from the front lines, Surgeons' Voices. And it's with great pleasure that I introduce somebody who is the voice of a soon-to-be surgeon rather than a surgeon yet, a fourth-year medical student from the Medical College of Georgia, Blair Burton. The reason that Blair is with us today is she will be giving a presentation on her research at our upcoming virtual annual clinical congress. Welcome, Blair. Thank you, Dr. Wexler. Happy to be here. I wish I was there in person, but um, you know, we're just rolling with the times here. So I'm a fourth year medical student um, from the Medical College of Georgia, as you said, and I'm going into orthopedic surgery. Um, my project that I will be virtually presenting this year is the prevalence of cervical spine pathology um, and previous spine surgery in patients undergoing reverse shoulder arthroplasty. Um, my mentor in this project was Dr. Steven Parada. Um, he's our shoulder guy at MCG and I've worked with him on several projects now. And the reason why I chose to submit this um, project to ACS this year is because I think it highlights um, an important aspect that surgeons in general need to uh, keep in mind when they're working patients up, well, shoulder pathology in this case, but it really just highlights the prevalence of spine disease and how it can affect uh, patients' outcomes in the OR. What was your feeling when you found out that you wouldn't be going in person from Augusta to Chicago and instead, uh, you already alluded to it, rolling with the times, but, but what was your feeling? Hey, have you given a national presentation on a podium? So I was, hoping to be there in person. I have never been to Chicago. This actually would be my second national conference, but the second virtual one as well. So I have not had the opportunity to travel in person and attend a big national conference. I was supposed to attend one in April and that became an, an e-virtual presentation as well. So I'm just getting lots of experience in that realm, but hopefully can make it in person in the upcoming years. Are you planning to write the manuscript from your research or perhaps did you already write it up? That is a great question. So we divided our project up. It's into like a part one and a part two. We are actually writing the manuscript right now and we have looked at our patient's outcomes from two years and on and looked at the clinical outcome scores associated with shoulder pathology. I'm finishing up my research elective and the manuscript should be done in the next week or so. Great. And to what journal will you be sending it? We'll be submitting it to uh, the Journal of Shoulder and Elbow Surgery, JS, yes. Will you be continuing this line of research when you finish and start your residency? Do you think you'll be able to, or is that contingent upon where you are as a resident? Definitely plan to obviously continue research and residency. Uh, this particular project should hopefully be, be well done by then um, and accepted somewhere. Our part two, I plan to continue on throughout the rest of this year, but we have a couple of younger medical students that hopefully I can stay in touch with and finish up a couple of the other projects I have as my time is ending in medical school, sadly. Perhaps for those of us who are not orthopedic surgeons or joint surgeons, you could enlighten us with um, a kind of simplified version of what's the take-home message from your research? So that is a great point to make. So as orthopedic surgeons, the co pathologies are known to have affect patient outcomes from the OR. In this particular, it's kind of well known, but it hasn't been particularly studied that it is common for patients that have shoulder issues to also have cervical spine issues and they can kind of mask one another. So if someone with a cervical spine or radiculopathy, it can radiate down to the shoulder and be masked and vice versa. Um, so this was really focusing on in the clinical setting, making sure you rule out or are aware of cervical spine pathology in our patients before undergoing surgery because it can affect their outcomes. That is one of the findings we'll be publishing soon. Poor outcomes are associated with patients who also have cervical spine pathology in our shoulder patients. And a more generic question, um, what is the sentiment amongst medical students, at least where you are at Medical College of Georgia, about the annual clinical congress? People don't have to travel to Chicago, although that's a disappointment for somebody who's going to be presenting. For somebody who may want to listen to some lectures, but wouldn't necessarily have the means 
financially or the means time-wise to travel to Chicago. Now they could hear one or two or five lectures at the exorbitant price of free. Um, is there some uh, chatter around campus? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head with the word free there. As medical students, um, we take anything that's free. We'll take, we'll take whatever we can get. So it definitely is opening up the experience. I think it is all great for every medical student to have a experience at a national conference or convention um, and just kind of see the atmosphere. And it will be a little bit different this year, but just to see the caliber of presentations and projects um, and fellow surgeons, I think will be a great experience for us and inspiring for the younger medical students going into surgery. Once again, I congratulate you on having your work accepted for a presentation at the Annual Clinical Congress. And I, I wish you success both during your presentation and in your upcoming career as an orthopedic surgeon. I look forward to hearing and seeing your presentation and uh, subsequently seeing it in print, although I must confess I don't have a subscription to that journal, but I will look for it. I will send you a copy.